Good Saturday morning to you. Beautiful day today. Things are changing. Weather is going to be kind of unsettled really on and off the next week. So we're going to look at that in the, the models. We're going to see um, some rain showers, some snow showers, some winter weather advisories, some wind advisories from Seattle all the way south to Southern California, down to Laguna Beach and in, in, uh, Orange County. And then we're going to see temperatures on the mild side today, but those begin to drop as well. Big surf along the coast, uh, pretty really very large. It's pretty big today and it's going to stay big especially on the north and central coast. It'll get, it's not so big in Southern California, but that, there's this surf, and in, in Hawaii, it's big as well. Um, I wanted to start off with, uh, thank you for making my last night at Channel 2 so fun. Everybody who was there, and if you watched, it was just, it was fun. It was like, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome, just seeing everybody. And a lot of people came back, and it's just, it's a family. Channel 2, I said it on the air, but Channel 2... You, you know, I got there and Dennis Richmond was there. And if you know Dennis, he has a big, powerful presence and they own the ratings. And we still own the ratings, but we own the ratings, like Super Bowl numbers every night of the week. And so I, they slide me in to Pat McCormick's slot. Pat McCormick was the weather guy before me. He was dialing for dollars guy. So he wasn't really a meteorologist, but they slide me in and I just basically, I'm, all of a sudden I'm on a, a bullet train going bazillion miles an hour and instead of you know channel 50 i'd get maybe five ten thousand viewers the, all of a sudden there's a million people out there right seeing and so my uh, my my trajectory was really rapid and so I, I have so much grateful so many grateful feelings for my my opportunities that i had and to carve out a life i'm showing you pictures of the kind of the last night here but just the opportunity I've had to carve out a life that I love, which is, and you know about it, right? It's, it's pretty basic stuff. It's, it's, I get to surf a bunch, bike a bunch. I get to do all the things I love to do. And on top of that, KTVU allowed me to raise my family in an environment that's not easy to raise a family, working nights. They let me come home for dinner every night. I came home for dinner every night and I see my kids after school. And that is very unusual for television. Television is so hard on these people because they work nights and a lot of them don't get to see their kids. And a lot of people don't have the situation I had where I could kind of work from home. But anyway, I can go on and on and on, but I just was so pleased to see Mark Abanez there and Julie Hayner and um, Amber and, and uh, it was just awesome. And all the kids, you know, it's, it's the station's full of young people who are stoked and uh, they want them to stay still because it's an awesome industry. It's going to change for sure, but it's an awesome industry. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk more about that some other time. Let's look at the satellite loop. There it is. There we are. There's California. It's got a little glitch. In it. This is actually infrared, just colorized. And we've got a little something coming in for tomorrow. Some scattered showers. We'll look at that in a minute. We've got fog along the coast. I'll, put a, I'll have to put a loop around here because that's the Bay Area. Here's Point Conception, which is the big break, right? We always talk about. And that's the difference between the haves and the have-nots in terms of rainfall. Certainly this season. Not, you know, 20%, 10%, 15% of average below Point Conception. 60 to 70 to 120 percent of average north so there's been a big it's a dividing line the mountains got plenty of snow this is from today there will be wind advisories there's a winter weather advisory in the mountains we'll take a look at that now this is the u.s map now this is a quick glance at what's going on across the country and just greens are going to be generally hydro or water issues flooding or flood advisories the blues and the the pinks i guess that's pink it's winter, winter storm warning, snow advisory, and then the browns are going to be um, wind related. And you see Southern California's got some wind related stuff, wind advisories, but fortunately they've got plenty of fuel moisture, right? Because of the recent rain. So we're not worried about fires there. But when I look at that, this you can, you can plan your day around it, right? It looks pretty, pretty doable, except down here, if you've got a flight through that goes through Atlanta, these are winter storm warnings. So I always look at the hubs because the hubs are what, it, everything ripples from there. So if Atlanta gets balled up, right, and it could with the winter storm warning over the next couple of days. So keep an eye on this um, if you're if you have any tra you know connecting flights. Uh, so that's tomorrow and to today tomorrow uh, watches. This is Bay Area close up. There is the um, high surf warning, which is is big, and then there's the high surf alerts are in kind of light blue, and then that blue there is the you probably know what that is, right? Snow advisory. And then you see Southern California, there's the wind. And again, no red flag warnings because of the fuel moisture. If, they, if we didn't have that rain the other day, 
yeah, you know, on and on. So, and then there's the high surf advisory. Oh, look, it stops once you get south of Point Conception. It, there's a, a wave shadow here, right? And that's that's why Santa Barbara did barely show in swell today. And then you can see it picks up again. Once you get out a little further south, you get a good high surf advisory down towards San Diego. Okay, so this is our Mount Tamalpais camera. This is uh, this morning at about noon. And let's do this. Let's put a little loop on this bad boy. I'll put, let's do six hours. So there's the coastal fog came in. You can see it kind of coming in tonight. And then you look at it flushing back the other way. Isn't that interesting how it, it kind of floods in and floods out. A little bit of valley fog tied up in there as well, but just a beautiful shot. And there's, oh my gosh, that's Mill Valley down below. And that's your morning. Wow, I didn't, I didn't see that this morning. I haven't been sleeping that good because I've been kind of, my mind's been spinning about all this stuff going on. Um, this is Ocean Beach, eight to, well, 12 to 15 probably. Tide is manageable, but it's dangerous. It's really dangerous out there today. High surf warning, as we talked about. And you see the clouds coming in. Some of that is low cloud, a little bit of fog, and then some of it is just clouds coming in from the next system that gets here kind of tonight into Sunday. This is Steamer Lane. This is, I like this shot because it's um, kind of it's kind of up close and personal. This is the, the slot kind of where the lighthouse is just to the right. And this is where the alphas sit. I always say that, but you... you you're not going to get a lot of waves if you go in there. These kids are real good. It's right in front of the cliff, but once you get around that corner, like down here, so you catch it and you roll this way, you go right up along the rocks, and it's a great ride. It's a good wave, especially this first section. Um, and I don't know if we're going to see a set. I don't see it. So swells down, there's a, they're pretty big. This is, oh, I should know this. This is, oh, no, is this Hawaii? No, it doesn't look like Hawaii to me at all. It looks like, oh, um, Mavericks. Okay. Yeah, this is Mavericks. Ooh, yeah, it looks like Mavericks now. And it is just showing. Harder to catch today, but Mavericks, little, the winds are right. The tide's not bad, but the swells, you know, you really do need a robust swell for Mavericks to break. Um, and you need the right wind conditions. And you need the right tide. Surfing, I'm telling you, surfing is like, it's not like, oh, don't go on surfing. I mean, surfing is, you got to have... You gotta have a lot of not. You gotta you gotta hit everything just right. All the beats have to come together for it to be an awesome day. It's kind of like trying to get a good powder day when you're a skier. Like everything has to be right, man. The roads have to be open. The snow has to be, you know, blah blah blah. You have to be able to get on the chairlift. And Mavericks is no different. Even more complicated, actually. This is Pipeline, uh, eight to ten or eight to twelve today. Pretty big. It was real big out there yesterday, and you can see it's squirrely ocean. It's just all over the place. There are people out. I think I saw somebody back in here catch a wave. And you see when anytime pipeline closes out over here, it's the wave, I think, is right over here. Yeah, and it's a left. Um, also, look, let's see if anybody goes. Mm, yeah, so that's pipeline. It's big. It's going to get a little smaller in the next couple of days. But overall, the Aleutian Islands are lit with um, swell or with winds. And so these swells are being generated from the Gulf of Alaska. And so they're going to keep coming. They're going to keep coming. And this week, especially... We kind of have a progressive series of weather systems that come through the West Coast, but they're all kind of weak thus far. And I'll show you what I mean by that. This is Ledbetter Beach down at uh, Santa Barbara, just north of the harbor. And I just wanted to show you the difference in swell size, right? I mean, you get around Point Conception, now you're inside the point, swell drops off significantly. The model, okay, this, this is Vorticity, right? And we're just, Vorticity, let's just, we're, this is the um, spark right? It's the match and the, that's, or the engine. And then the water vapor is the fuel. So you need, you need them both. You'll get like with just this spark, this being the spark, these red areas, these yellow areas, you'll get something, but it's when you have the fuel combined with that spark. And we're going to look at both the spark and the fuel. This is the spark. Here is a little something comes through. This is your Sunday, right? You see it drop in. Now, that looks good, right? But you'll see that there's not a lot of moisture tied into that. So that's the first round. But scattered showers, for sure. Snow advisories, uh, wind things, stuff like that. Southern California, you might see a little bit of shower activity as well. And then we get to Tuesday. A little bit of spark. A little bit of spark. A little more spark on to Tuesday into Wednesday. So it looks like, you know, Tuesday night into Wednesday looks like something. So you see the whole week is kind of dominated and then this is into Monday of the next week. You see it's dominant. It's just a, it's a storm series. Now, 
and I'll have a loop around that for you, right? Isn't that interesting? So it's, it's pretty progressive, right? So that, first of all, those storms aren't coming from nowhere, so they're creating swell. So the waves are going to be big the next week, two weeks. And we know that we're going to have energy in our region on and off over the next five days or so. But when you go look at the fuel, right? So that was the spark. This is the fuel. That's just the blue tip. And the green is moisture for sure. Brown is dry. But you, the moisture, you really want it pointed at you. When you want, you know, so like that Sunday thing, if this was pointed at us, it would be two inches of rain. Instead, it's going to be a quarter inch of rain, maybe a half inch at most, something like that, in the rainiest spots. So you get the idea. I'm just roughing it out. But so here is, right? So see, it just kind of, oh, that's not much. That's Sunday. That's Sunday morning, pretty dry right? The, the, the fuel isn't there. The spark's going to be there, but the fuel is not. So let's go through to that Tuesday event. There's a little bit of, now Tuesday looks a little better, right? So a little bit of fuel, see California, goes down to LA. It doesn't, it stays offshore, the blue. That's the heavier, oh, and then LA gets a little punch through on, okay, that's on Wednesday afternoon. So Wednesday afternoon, LA, when that low comes through, you might get, so the fuel kind of looks like it's phasing in a little bit with the trough or with the match. And then you get no fuel there. So no matter with, if there's a match around or a spark, something will happen, but not as not much. And then here, see, so what, what I'm seeing is the fuel kind of getting shunted before it gets to us, right? So this is water, precipitable water. And then I just noticed, if you look at this, check out down in the Gulf of, <laughs> the Gulf of America. <laughs> you check out down there. Look at that stuff, man. That's, that's, gee, that's some rain, man. That's some rain. That's some severe weather too, potentially. So, okay, so that's precipitable moisture. Um, and then this is the, this is the a GFS model, a sea level pressure and rainfall. And here we go. This is... Sunday morning, right? And you'll see that you're seeing the result of not a lot of fuel with some dynamics, with a spark. And this is the result, not much, right? So there's, there's Monday, now you're into Monday morning. Now here comes another, right? And there, where's the fuel? None. So there's Tuesday afternoon. There's a little better. This is that deal for LA, I think, kicks through. And that looks a little better, a little bit of fuel. And then that kicks down. Now you can, um, there you go, now you got something. That's on March 10th. Now it looks good. That's the real deal. That's a winter storm warning. And then there's one behind. Okay, so somewhere right now, we're unsettled, but then somewhere around March 12th, things look pretty awesome in terms of fuel being available. So, yeah, I know, I know. I'm oversimplifying, but I think that's what it requires. And also, one of the things you don't want to do with models is take them at full value, at face value. Don't just go, oh yeah, that's what's going to happen because that's not what's going to happen. That's what we looked at was the precipitable, we looked at precipitable water and we looked at um, vorticity. The fuel meets the spark. Those two have to phase together. So you saw what we did. We went through the days and the fuel might have been there, but the, the spark wasn't there. And you'll still get something, but it's a different type of storm. It's a different animal. And so now we're going to look at what, what would be the result of days of rainfall. So here is Sunday system. This is accumulation. Sunday, this is Sunday day, all day. So, you know, Marin County, quarter of an inch, half an inch at best. Mountains get a couple of inches of snow. This is Sunday. You see it's light, it's light, it's light. And this is accumulating. Not much else for us. And then, boom, we start to see a little something else right there. That is Thursday. And then you see a little more. Now, it's accumulated. It's still light, man. I mean, this isn't a lot of rain. And then we get to that, that, now you got a little something. This looks like we're getting into that March 10th period. Yeah, we are. And then things start to light up. So that's when the precipitable water matches up with the spark. I hope that makes sense. I've never used that. I just used that analogy the other day. And I was like, I think that's a pretty good analogy. Because that's all weather is, right? If you can get these two things that are kind of orbiting around each other, the, the energy from the jet stream, the, the, the spark, and the fuel from the subtropics, essentially, the moisture plume, if you can phase those together, you got something almost every, uh, every time. One by itself will get you something for sure. That, that why some storms give you a tenth of an inch, and that's why some other storms give you five inches, right? Okay, so this is Mount Shasta. We're looking from, we're kind of up by Alturas, which if you've never been to Eastern California, Northern California, it's awesome. Kind of looks like Bend, Oregon, 
they got they got a little secret going on up there, man. I'm telling you, like if you're, I mean, I if you ever been to Fall River, it's like oh my god, it's one of the prettiest places. This is the backside of Mount Shasta. Um, this is I think that's Mount Shasta. But if we're not tourists, maybe it's not. That could be. Hmm, I may that may not be Shasta. That might be um, the southern volcano, McLaugh, Mount McLaughlin, up by Oregon. Okay, sorry, I should know that. I did. I can't. I can't check it now. But uh, anyway, you, it's beautiful up there, all tourists. And then this is Palisades Tahoe today. Just cue the skiers. Not a bad day. It's a weekend. Skiing's been good. I'm talking to the folks up there, and it's they got they got snow. They would like more. Right now, it's all groomers. The off-piece stuff is really chunky and, and gnarly. Um, so that's Palisades. This is Ski Terrain Park at Sugar Bowl. Yeah, that's me on the side jump. You used to call it Snob Hill. This used to be the Bunny Hill. And then they turned into Trimper. That's fun. A lot of families. Sugar Bowl is a good family ski place. And then, then this is Heavenly Mountain, Heavenly Valley. And this view, right? Oh, my God. Right. And then there's a cool thing they do. I don't know if they still do it, but there's a Nevada side to Heavenly because Heavenly's right on the border. So you get to the top of the mountain, you ski down one way, and then you go the other way, you're in Nevada. So it's, I don't know, when you're a little kid, oh my God, I skied into Nevada and from California. It just, it had such an awesome ring to it. Uh, so that's a beautiful shot too. I love seeing people skiing happily. Okay. And it's a beautiful day. Won't be so much tomorrow. Tomorrow it's going to be, you know, the, that, the fuel's coming in without the spark. So there, but there's going to be scattered showers, snow flurries, a winter weather advisory. And I think Shasta will do okay. But you guys up in Seattle and Portland, a lot of this stuff's missing you guys. You're kind of, you know, this is more of a southern event. You'll get your showers and sprinkles, but maybe a little bit of wind too. But in terms of the big, the big bomber thing, because it's the same thing for you. If you get, you're, if you guys are looking for, you guys are looking for moisture to phase in with your dynamics and you guys are not going to have that. This is a little bit of fog showing up down around Wilshire Boulevard. This is Malibu, and that's the induction fog, the coastal fog. Um, I wish they'd had the foresight this on this camera to put it you know, in front of the antennas because it's such a beautiful part of the coastline. And again, I just, I'm just, just finishing up uh, King and Queen of Malibu, which is probably one of the most interesting California history stories, just because it's like, it's so quintessential LA. It's so quintessential California, um, especially at the turn of the century. Okay, so that's a lot. Um, I'll probably talk a lot more about retirement and the things I miss and the things I don't miss, but I really, really appreciate. I think what I appreciate most is because I was telling Tommy last night, because Tommy Tolbert's big, like his podcast is going to go off, right? And it already is. And um, he's done like two episodes and he's already got more people than me, which is, it makes sense because he's a freaking NBA all-star athlete. But it's, it's, it's really helpful, the nice compliments you guys leave. And it's weird. It fuels. It fuels both of us because it's like, you know, like you'll get to say something like, I really like that format. Or you go, I really maybe change this. Maybe. And that's kind of how this has been growing. And that's been fun for me because it kind of feels like a communal thing. <laughs> and sometimes I don't like your ideas, but most of the times they're pretty good. <laughs> And then I implement them. Um, but it's been, that's the fun part is we're kind of building it together. And it can be as big or as small as we want. Um, and we talk California weather. We talk California history. We talk, I'd like to do a little more history and a little more flair because I just love this place so much. Um, and so anyway, I just, I just think, well, I got, what I was going to thank you for was hanging in, especially if you're here now, but also just hanging in with your ideas and your kind words, it really fuels me. Because at one point I had like five subscribers for like a year. And then I had 10 and I had 20, right? And you guys are going to keep going, dude. Like there's one guy out there who goes, dude, you are crushing this. This, this format, this, a few of you guys are saying that. And it makes me go, oh, okay. Because, I'm, I'm, you know, as an old guy, you want to make sure you're doing it right. And I assume you guys are younger kids that are saying this because you guys understand the medium i'm a tv guy came from you know many years of television i don't i I'm, I'm learning the medium but you guys understand it so the the help i get from you guys has been awesome okay so thank you very much for uh, all the kind words and all the awesome notes it's been awesome okay that was a long one it's saturday see you back here maybe tomorrow i shouldn't i should know maybe tomorrow oh and that's the last thing i'm gonna do more um i'm gonna try to be more do it because now I'm retired. I'm gonna try to hit the beast. Like it's late now because I got up and I got I was out late last night. 
but I'd like to hit the beats more, like have this thing done by nine in the morning and out to you by 10 o'clock every morning. And that's something, maybe it's an afternoon thing, maybe it's a morning thing, we'll have to figure out what we like or what you guys like the best. Okay, enough of me.